Hey there YouTube, um, my name is Leon and this will be my demonstration of a uh, 2D writing environment that I've been working on. Um, let's see, I'm just going to go out this outline here, it's going to be four parts, the first part is just going to be a tech demonstration, I'm gonna put on, the next part is going to be the uh, actual features, some stuff about design, which is uh, you might not be too interested in, and then some of the philosophical stuff that went into making this or imagining it or whatever. All right, so uh, let's start off. Um, basically, I start by pressing a hotkey, and uh, it gives me a, a set of files to associate with a text plane. Um, I'm going to load these files in another window, and as you can see, on loading these files, I have a uh, panable text environment. So I can, for example, edit this file right here, and then I can go here, edit this file, and um, I can also zoom in and out. As you can see, uh, when I zoom out, it doesn't automatically redraw. I can either press the hotkey twice to redraw it, or I can actually, uh, if I go back in, um, and zoom back out again, I can simply start panning, and it'll automatically redraw it. Uh, so uh, the idea is that um, you know you have an overall view of what you're working on, supposedly, and um, at any moment, you can, uh, you know, zoom in to a particular space. Oops. And, um, you know, work on whatever, uh, whatever you you want here. All right. So let's return to the original zoom and um, go back to my outline. Panning and zooming. All oh, right. So uh, I've been using this uh, for a bit now, and. Um, Besides just making everything run well, I've added some other features. Now, the first thing that's interesting is, uh, you know, at any time you can, um, this is a built-in command. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm working on the Vim text editor. It's uh, a pretty old text editor, I think like 20 years old or something like that, and it's still being actively, actively maintained. Um, it's really it's really cool. It's, it's one of the coolest programs out there, I believe. Um, and it's all built, this, this whole script is written within the text editor. Uh, it's written in a scripting language, so I didn't have to, really have to do much. It's actually just a single text file. Uh, the code is all right here. It's only, uh, it's only like, let's see, was it 700 lines long? Um, it took me a while to write, but uh, so it, it was relatively easy to code. Um, so, right, I've been using this for a while now, and I've added some features that uh, I've found that were convenient just by using it. The first one is um, you can you can uh, press only, which is the built-in Vim command, which is a colon only, and it'll sort of zoom in on the current window. And if you want to get out of that, you can just start panning again. Um, so only, and then uh, uh, you can also do a, open this window in a new tab, which would uh, take it out of the plane completely. And in this case, panning won't do anything. Um, so we can close this tab. Whoops. Uh, sometimes it gets messed up. You just have to... Oh, what's going on here? Oh, good. Good lord. All right. So you kind of have to redraw. I'm not sure why that did that. Oh, I see. It was another tab I'd open for some reason. All right. Um, only. Tab edit versus only. Yeah, it's easier to get out of only. It's a temporary thing. Um, full screen options. Yeah. Uh, Forget about that. Uh, the other consideration is wrap versus hard wrap. Um, right now, you have, I have hard wrap on, uh, which means um, you know uh, there's an option where uh, the text editor automatically inserts a line break in between long lines. Um, there's also a soft wrap, which um, you can toggle by um, you know uh, a Vim setting. And this, in this case, you know, as you can see, the uh, the text editor uh, doesn't doesn't automatically automatically wrap it, so um, s scrolling would uh, scrolling would uh, be a bit different. Um, the soft wrap window automatically uh, obviously scrolls faster than the hard wrapped window, uh, but um, it's nice in that the uh, the padding thing works well for both. Um, works well for hard wrap and soft wrap, so uh, it's your choice. But it obviously, looks better on uh, on hard wrap. Um, customizations. Oh right. Uh, um, there's there's a variable you can set. I'm not. I'm. Sh I feel. I, I get a feeling that if you know Vim, you should 
You should have this all this figured out already. But um, if you go into the source code, you can uh, you can you can set this uh set this variable in the very first line to use a custom key other than F three. Um, I actually use capital Q. FYI. Uh, the split color. Oh right. So um, it, uh, yeah. Every, pretty much everything is uh, customizable in Vim. So um, one of the things you can customize is the color of the split. So you can get uh, get rid of the uh, the ugly yellow I have here. Uh, um, I wish I could get rid of the split entirely, but. Uh, Right now, there's always a there's always a gray bar there where the split is. Um, split color. Oh right, so um, so uh, I, I've I put all the features in a helpful um helpful help menu. So you access the menu by pressing Q and by pressing uh, F1, or if you forget, uh, press Q and press any key, and it'll tell you to press F1 for help. Um, Gives you a short introduction. Um, let's see. F1 show this message. Left mouse pan. Pan mode hotkey. R to redraw. Right. Uh, if you wish. Um, Q to redraw. So I have a, the hotkey set to Q. So if I press Q twice, it'll redraw. Um, there's there's an option for keyboard panning, which means that uh, I can I can uh, use the so-called roguelike keys to pan a keyboard. Or pan faster with the keyboard. Um, oh, there's the change list thing, which um, so for example, uh, if I make a change here, say change, and if I make a change uh, elsewhere, um, I can use uh, as you can see, I haven't used this too much, so. I can use tab and space to go back and forth and change lists. So I press the hotkey and I press tab, 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 or space, space to go back to the changes I've made. And this is kind of helpful if you edit across text files, which obviously I haven't done too much since I don't even know the buttons. Um, this delete. Oh, delete, deleting and appending columns. So uh, if you ever get sick of a column, um, you can press Q and D to delete the column. Press Y to confirm. And the column deletes, and the other column shifts over. I'm pretty sure this will mess up the uh, the change list. Um, that's for a future date, though. Oh, I guess it didn't. Oh, okay. All right, so it won't mess up the change list. Nice. Um, delete, append, follow text links, bookmarks, scroll bind toggle. All uh, right, so um, scroll bind toggles. You can turn scroll binding on and off. And which means you can you can now scroll each window independently like this, and turn it back on again. It'll make you each uh, the windows scroll together again. Oops. Um, hard links. Edit current buffer settings. Um, you th those aren't too important. Um. Oh, that's about it. Cool. Oh, and the last thing, I guess, is the to-do, the upcoming list. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm doing that right now. All right. Uh, well, anyways. Yeah, I th I th there's a few things I have to take care of um, in the coming weeks or whatever. Uh, so the next part, I guess, by our outline would be the uh, some of the random design considerations. Um, they, the, whole, the whole thing is Vim script, and it's incredibly fun to script in Vim script. Um, mostly because um, it involves writing something that you you actually use all, all the time. Um, I'm on the computer for hours and hours every day, and I'm pretty much always in Vim. Um, I have a few papers I'm working on, and um, I'm obviously working on this thing. Uh, so um, everything I do, I actually use, and uh, from that use, use, you know, use and coding cycle, you get a lot of feedback, and uh, I, I get the feeling you figure out things about coding that I, I didn't figure out before when I just, you know, had to do it in school or something like that. Um, it's kind of like building a house. Um, 
you kind of um you kind of care a bit more about features that go into it and you know what's convenient and what's not and stuff like that um it, it's it's i i spent t- quite a long time on this but um it's mostly working within the whole uh, w- what's being offered to me in vimscript um as the whole thing would be completely trivial to implement if uh if somebody just wrote a function that you know allowed me to reset all this all, resize all the splits at once and then it would just be you know it it would you can do it within like a day or something like that i get the idea so um a lot of it is just uh you know making sure that making sure the split resizings look like it's, it's an animation i'm actually resizing all the splits at once stuff like that um but uh you know that's that's what's nice there's some trade offs to having a scripting language um you know, it probably it's probably like relatively difficult i'd imagine to implement such a um an internal function um all oh, right so so uh vim um vim is a program that i highly recommend to anyone and one of the one of the best features about vim is that you can you can put on anything so um you know right now we're we're all working with multiple devices these days so uh if you have a laptop a desktop and uh, especially an android device um you can uh, use the same you have the same working environment uh for all all everywhere so uh for example uh, you know i have the same i have the same script running on android and on my laptop and uh it's completely seamless and it's something that the sort of inter operational ability or whatever the word may be uh it's hard to find these days uh where you know constructing the most simple thing seems completely elaborate um i originally got into vim because of uh the nokia n9 n810 internet tablet and uh that was it was really cool uh but um you know it didn't uh it was just a text editor it didn't have a lot of it didn't um didn't have a you know didn't have a lot of vim stock doesn't come with a lot of features it's very powerful but it doesn't come with a lot of features and so uh the, one of the first things i did for that text editor uh, for the n810 which was a uh, which is a handheld device was i, I put in uh you know padding and uh zooming and stuff like that with the uh with with the gest with the finger motions and it's kind of surprising that's relatively easy to do in vim that you can um you can put in stuff like padding and like i have right now padding it's panning and zooming and stuff like that uh you know even though it w- wasn't built for, obviously for the uh for, for a handheld device you can very easily update it to be um usable on a handheld device and it's that, that's really kind of cool um it's not simply for people like uh if you heard about the pro the uh what vim is it's a modal editor which means uh you know you press i to insert and then press h h j uh h j k l to navigate through the screen and and uh, and so um you know it, it it seems to encourage uh using the keyboard but it's not really uh for me i feel like it's just uh what's nice about it is primarily is the fact that it, um it's so uh, so widely ported and the fact that it has all all these relatively powerful script easy and easy to use scripting features that um you know pretty much allow you to build your own environment uh you can do that in a lot of text editors but uh with vim it's i feel like it's much easier um right so oh oh finally part four um if you're still here uh i want to talk about um you know what the stuff what the, the the planar text editor could be used for um the original idea i had was that uh you'd have like one big text plane for your entire life so um you know when when you were born you have one one text plane and you slowly add columns and text files to it and the idea is you know in my mind is to encourage a kind of spatial organization because the desktop is it's kind of useless like uh i mean the, the the usual way we organize things with computers doesn't really it doesn't really help us uh folders and you know you name a text document and uh you throw things in folders and eventually you know there's so many files that you have to put all the folders in another folder called old and then you st- start over again and I have, you know, hundreds, you know, thousands of text files by now. And um I just thought this was ridiculous. And I had the year I had the idea years ago that it would be nice if um if I if I could organize things spatially and I can sort of walk around and what I'm thinking about and maybe and just maybe, you know, you can, you know, more easily remember um your thoughts if you remember them as oh, I was working on, you know, 
a place like north of here or something like that. Um, cause that was my original idea. I had it years ago, and I thought it'd be really cool. And uh, that, that's kind of the weird thing about Vim is that, like, uh, you know, um, I knew about Vim years ago too, but uh, it was only until, like, uh, four or five years and they were using Vim that I realized how easily it could be done in Vim, relatively easily. It still took me, you know, a couple of weeks at least, but... Uh, you know, the, the fact that I didn't have to, you know, write, write a text editor from scratch and um, building in Vim gives me the advantage of having all the, you know, all the inbuilt Vim functions available, which is, which is great. Um, you know, you basically use, you, you basically work normally in Vim and then you have the single additional panning feature, which sort of allows you to remember what you were doing, you know, uh, remember, sort of remember what you were doing spatially. So that, that's the original idea. Um, Uh, but nowadays, um, I've been using it, and uh, the other nice thing is just having having uh, having columns and being able to work and margin notes and stuff like that. So you know, for example, right here, uh, I press GG in Vim to go to the top of the top of the line. Right here, I have the full text of Heart of Darkness here as column five, I think. And so, um, I uh, it, you know, the nice thing is that it allows me, you know, if I come across a passage I'm interested in, I can go to column six and write some notes here, or maybe column four, which is mostly empty, um, except for these hard links. Um, I put in these hard links, uh, you know, to uh, the idea is to have a, eventually someday to have a table of contents that would, uh, you know, by following these hard links, uh, link me to uh, various places in the document. Whoops. Q, G. As you can see, I haven't used these features much, so, uh, they're in there. Um, I, I, I haven't, I'd imagine this thing, this whole project would develop based on uh, what exactly I use it for. So uh, yeah, uh, I haven't, I haven't really capitalized on the idea of an infinite plane and you know organizing vast, vast tracts of text. But I have been using the whole margin thing, and that was really convenient. Um, margins and then margins to margins, notes, notes to notes, and notes, to notes and notes, notes, stuff like that. Um, but that's sort of a long-term goal. Um, I'm hoping long-term to try to see, uh, you know, how uh, how feasible it is, and um, what kind of what kind of changes, uh, what kind of uh, considerations, features, and stuff would would go into um, organizing text, organizing data, text, prose, spatially, um, rather than you know just having a single file where you keep on writing. Um, there's a few things I've, I've, I've been I've been trying and towards that end, um, using blocks of text and stuff like that, and you know, deleting in a very uh, haphazard or very being very liberal with my deletions. Um, but uh, that'll probably uh, be the subject of a future uh, YouTube video. Um, incredibly, let's let me read this incredibly elaborate system to do incredibly simple things. As the text of the medium, pattern warrior, willingness to work with text. I think I've talked about most of this stuff. I actually really like the Windows desktop just because it's sprawled out. And, uh, you know, if I'm like most people, like, I never clean up my Windows desktop. I never rearrange it according to name and date and stuff like that. It just, um, I tend to remember where things are and they fit in the clumps. And that's sort of the idea here, too, is uh, sort of to remember where things are, where you've written it. And without really organizing it, um, because organizing it, I mean, it's good, but it's it's very unnatural, and uh, you know, not being a not being an objectivist, I don't believe that you know there's some essential uh, essential taxonomy to what you're thinking. Um, and the best best thing you can do then is to just to recall recall what you're thinking rather than uh, rather than you know trying to fit everything in a in a archetype. Um, Oh, the last thing is horizontal splits. Um, I thought that, I mean, I, I would like horizontal splits. It would be nice, you know, right now these are all vertical splits. Uh, it would be nice if, um, you know, when I'm scrolling down, I could scroll down into another file. Like, uh, you know, like I, I can scroll down into, uh, instead of, you know, that's a horizontal split right here. I could scroll down, scroll down into uh, another file uh, instead of just having a panning. But, um, and the, the main reason why it's not in here is because um, 
scroll bind. Uh, the Vim's built-in scroll bind makes makes scrolling relatively fast. And if I put in horizontal splits, um, I would have to, you know, jump from window to window to manually scroll each line, and I think it would be a lot less smooth. And anyways, um, you know, hor horizontal splits, uh, you know, um, you can you can you can really naturally separate the text into blocks, and uh, that would sort of obviate the feature. Um, the main problem I came up with actually was the main problem I faced was that um, I couldn't, uh, you know, uh, text would become misaligned, um, so that you know if I go up, go back and edit an earlier portion, um, the later portions would become out of line, and you know, margins would would no longer be margins. Things that were relevant would no longer be close together. And uh, the solution that I I thought about was, um, you know, putting in like uh, putting in a, like you know, hard line, hard line numbers, like typing in, you know, line 103 here, um, and then eventually writing a script that would go back and sort of compile the whole plane and, you know, realign these things, which is, which is possible. Um, it wouldn't be that hard to implement, but, uh, I haven't, again, I haven't used the, uh, I haven't used the implement plane t features enough, uh, for me to, for me to find myself wanting to write something like that for now, but, um, yeah, this is, I mean, it's mostly feature complete, but uh, you know, I still want to, um, I still have yet to work on it a great deal. Um, everything's a mess right now. Um, you know, I, w I wasn't really sure how, how I would organize it, and so I just, um, things are a mess. I, th that either means that the infinite plane doesn't work or that I haven't really uh, streamlined my productivity around it, but um, I'm, going to, I'm going to be working with this my, within this system. Uh, myself for the next few months or so, and hopefully uh, I'll glean some insights into uh, whether whether my project is feasible or not. Um, but thanks for listening to all this. It was a relatively long presentation, twenty minutes, Jesus. But um, yeah, um, the link to install it is down in the YouTube video description. It's just uh, one text file. You just copy paste it and then uh, source it. So. Um, so oh, basically, um, you know, you uh, copy and paste the code here, and then you pr press colon S O uh, percentage, and that'll source the entire file. And y that's basically how you install anything in Vim. Um, so thanks for listening, and um, well, I hope you uh, give it give my uh, system a shot. Thanks.